Hello everyone. Um, in this set of videos, we're going to start chapter 18, which is talking about the second law of thermodynamics. And in this video, we are going to talk specifically about the concepts of the concepts behind and surrounding these this term that we call entropy um, that is incredibly important to chemical reactions in chemistry. So entropy really starts to ask the question, will the reaction happen? So the term enthalpy, this delta H, tells us the direction of energy flow. And this is what we worked with in chapter six. And so this is thinking, is this reaction endothermic or is this reaction exothermic? And normally we would say that reactions that happen are ones that do not require energy. So they are exothermic. They give off energy. But it turns out that in reality, there are lots of reactions that occur without the help of any catalysts that are endothermic. So there are reactions that require energy, but happen without any help besides that energy. And the real question becomes, why? Why do those reactions occur even though they require energy? So turns out that energy isn't the only component of will reactions happen. Entropy is another component. And so predicting the spontaneity, and spontaneity just really means will this reaction occur at all? Um, can, are there conditions in which we can make this reaction happen? And not really make this reaction happen, but are there conditions that we can create in which this reaction will just happen? Entropy is part of this. And entropy is a measure of the possible arrangements, orientations, or motions within a substance, a molecule. Every species has an inherent amount of entropy. Okay. And so measuring entropy gets tricky. Um, and so to determine the entropy of a single species, you must be able to quantify the orientations of that species. So this is a very sort of abstract idea. Um, and I'm going to try to go through an example to try to bring this idea to more concrete understanding. Okay, so if I have a cubby in my closet for shoes, so think just a cube organizer, and I have seven pairs of shoes, the question becomes, how many ways can I put the shoes into this cubby? Well, one way is that I put the shoes filling up the top row of cubbies and then starting on the second row until I run out of shoes. That is one possible orientation of my shoes within the cubby. But it turns out that there are many other orientations. This diagram gives you another possible orientation. And ultimately, to be able to measure the entropy of the shoes in my cubby, I would need to figure out how many possible orientations there are of my seven pairs of shoes within my 12 locations of the cubby. So we could continue along this path, counting the number of arrangements. We're not going to. Mathematicians have given us formulas that can count things like number of orientations. We're not going to talk about them. But conceptually, we can understand how something can have more or fewer orientations. So to th so if we go back to our cubby 
if I had 12 pairs of shoes, there are fewer orientations that are possible than whenever I have seven pairs of shoes. So with 12 pairs of shoes, there is only one way for me to put my shoes in my cubby. And so this idea of arrangements is directly related to entropy. Um, remember, we defined entropy as the number of orientations. And, but we still haven't quite connected how these arrangements, we understand that some things can have more or less, leading to things with more orientation to have more entropy, things with fewer orientations have less entropy. But how do we go from that concept of orientations to a property that predicts spontaneity in, or entropy? It turns out that this is the work of Boltzmann. And when you create, whenever you invent, I don't think invent's the correct word, but when you discover the a relationship that is so important um, as is the relationship between arrangements and entropy, when you are that good, you get your formula on your tombstone. And so Boltzmann is the one who was able to connect this abstract idea of arrangements to entropy and thus to spontaneity and really opened up the world of chemistry and physics um, with this. Um, to give you a, a little bit, a little antidote, um, I have a good friend, um, she is a poet, and she often asks scientists and mathematicians what their favorite equation is. And I always respond with the Boltzmann equation, S equals K log omega, or K log W. Because the Boltzmann equation controls so much of chemistry, science, and life. And so I find this a very, a very interesting idea. And so really moving from this abstract idea to entropy comes from this Boltzmann equation, S equals K log omega, where S is the entropy of the system, the inherent entropy of something. So thinking about the entropy in my shoes in the cubby. K is Boltzmann constant. Um, when you are super famous, you get to have a constant named after you. And W, or sometimes given omega, is the number of arrangements. And so this number of arrangements is thinking about how many ways can my shoes go into the cubby. And with the Boltzmann's constant, we can relate the number of ways my shoes go into a cubby into the inherent entropy that exists within putting my shoes into the cubby. Okay, so the good news is we are not going to do math with the Boltzmann equation. We're not going to count the number of arrangements and we're not going to solve for the inherent entropy of the system. But in the next several videos, we're going to work through what does entropy mean and how are we going to use it to be able to understand things like the spontaneity of a reaction. Okay. I hope this helps and um, keep asking good questions.